Hi everyone, uh, welcome all to Cranky Geek. And this year we're going to do this on AI in RTC. I really, I'm really happy that all of you are here. If you don't have room to sit, either stand or go to the overflow room. There is another room somewhere over that way. It's empty and it's nice. You can still see us there, okay, on large screens. So before we start, I'm Tzachi Levent Levy, and with me are Chad Hart and Chris Kernker. And we're the people behind Cranky Geek. Uh, thank you. So just out of curiosity, I tried doing that a few minutes ago. Whose event this is the first time that he's at a Cranky Geek event? Okay, lots of new guys. Two times. Who is here for two times? Three times. Chad as well, okay. Four times? Five times, anyone? <laughs> okay, that's how I know that you actually did only four times. We've, we, only, we always discuss that. Uh, yeah. Is that the third or fourth or fifth? So this is our fourth event in San Francisco for Cranky Geek. Uh, if you want to tweet, this is going to be the hashtag for the day. The agenda is available online. It's also easy to get there by just clicking crankygeek.com. We have a full schedule today. We're starting now. Welcome and a lot of other stuff. We are going to have three breaks, a lunch. We're going to have networking reception and no fire drill. <laughs> last, year, yes. last year we had the fire drill. This year we've got something fire. worse. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to also thank Peter Labbers and the SFHTML5 meetup group. They've taken us under their wings for the last four years. So thanks for that. They're doing most of the administration around the event, so we don't need to deal with it. Your tickets, the ones you purchased, go to Girl Develop It. So thanks for that. <coughs> Today we're going to have a full day. I've already said that. It's the biggest event we've had so far in terms of the number of sessions. We're going to have 14 sessions. Also, I count it each and every time to make sure that it's 14. Thanks for Google hosting this, doing the event with us for all of these years. Our sponsors are also ex exhibitors, Intel, Agora, and Nexmo. Go see their booths outside. And thanks for the supporting sponsors, Colsats, VoiceBase, and Ring Central. One last thing, this is the fir first year, I think, that we've got, at least in the audience, all four major platforms for WebRTC. So if you want them, go hunt them down. To make that easier for you, uh, the guys from Google, Niklas, raise your hand. He's the one, go ask questions. Nils Mozilla, that's him. James, Microsoft, are you here or haven't? Okay, we'll call him out in the next break, don't worry. And UN, we'll hunt him down later as well, okay? Uh, they all said yes to this stupid thing that I've done just now. <laughs> <laughs> so because this is Cranky Geek and we're dealing with real-time communications and WebRTC, we're going to have three main sessions that deal with WebRTC. One from Google, which is going to be WebRTC 1.0, the roadmap into there, and also changes in the audio pipeline in Chrome that are coming. And we've we will also have inter interesting sessions from Intel and Discord. In, in the past, uh, as many of you know, the main focus of the event was really just on WebRTC. Last year, for the first time, we started to introduce some machine learning and AI topics, and that was very well received. Um, so, uh, and we're certainly very interested to know a lot of you are. Um, actually, over the summer, Saidi and I did a market research study where we actually talked to a bunch of companies uh, about this and found generally there's basically universally everyone's interested uh, in learning more about this topic. We found, in general, um, kind of grouped the market into four main areas, right? There's speech analytics, voice bots, computer vision, and RTC optimization. And we'll be talking about each of those uh, and have a bunch of sessions on each of those uh, throughout today. The first is speech analytics. You know, this is speech to text, transcription, you know, automatic speech recognition uh, is a common term. Right? This is a, a, a pretty big one. We've really seen uh, speech analytics in a lot of ways has really gone mainstream, right? Due to a few reasons. And one, quality's gotten much better. Um, better quality's led to more usage. More usage has led to a larger market and more vendors. More vendors, they introduce new algorithms, new use cases, and that, you know, it, it dust introduces better quality. 
all the while um, the costs of doing this going down. So there's, there's a lot of activity going on here. And to talk a little bit more about that today, we'll have voice space, uh, voice era, and, and dial pad. Voice bots is another one, you know, other terms for this, you know, smart speakers, virtual assistants, uh, another very big domain. And this is an interesting area. I mean, certainly this started out largely in the consumer space, um, but we're seeing a lot of crossover now uh, and impacts you know, from some of these consumer-oriented developments uh, into business domains. Um, and that's true for some of the small vendors, uh, even larger ones like Amazon and Google. And to talk a little bit more about this today, um, Nexmo uh, and IBM uh, will be both covering that topic. Lastly, in, in an area that I enjoy quite a bit is computer vision. Uh, I think everyone's seen on Snapchat or you know, Messenger, putting some funny hats and mustaches on people. There's a lot more applications to computer vision uh, than that. Another exciting trend here, too, is uh, even you know, we have a, a bunch of members here that are involved in some of the specs and standardization. The W3C is actually uh, considering some computer vision use cases and how that would impact as they look at WebRTC specs and, and what to do going forward. So exciting times, right? There's a lot more of this stuff coming. And uh, we have a quite a few vendors here talking about uh, or mentioning computer vision in one form or another uh, throughout the day. Intel, Facebook, Agora, House Party, and Microsoft will all be covering this. Now, the previous one might have been the last one, so we've got the last one as well. And that's optimization for real-time communications. And to try and explain that, this is how I've, you know, I've been um, going through that in the last 20 years. When you look at media processing algorithms, they've been all based on heuristics. That would be the green line. So we've all been working on writing the rules into our algorithms to decide what to do to improve the performance and the quality of what it is that we're trying to do. And the trend that we're seeing is that people are starting to use machine learning instead. So instead of writing the rules, we're trying to let machines find these rules and use them to optimize the quality of our media. In this domain, we're going to have talks from Ring Central and called Stats.io. We also have a discount on the report. If you want, go online, purchase it, or talk to us. There's a coupon code for that. And I'd like to thank you. And we're going to start now with the real sessions. <laughs>